Hi, this is Dr. Srikanth from Team MDS Conquer. Now we are going to have a quick recap of operator dentistry. So the first important thing that you have to make a note when you're talking about the mandibular first premolar. Okay, the mandibular first premolar is whenever you do a preparation in mandibular first premolar, make a note you should have a slight tilt. Okay, that is basically due to the lingual inclination of this particular teeth. <clears throat> and make a note about this particular criteria. Okay, so the enamel must be supported by sound dentin. Enamel rods which forms the cavo surface angle must have their inner ends rested on sound dentin. Enamel rods forming the cavo surface margin should be covered with restoration always. And make a note your angular cavo surface angle should be trimmed always. So these are the four criteria that you have to make a note. And the next one is uh, preventive resin restoration. So basing upon the extent and the depth, they are categorized into type A, type B, type C. So please go through what is type A, what is type B and what is type C. And uh, <coughs> Simonson has uh, advocated a type of sealant in each type of category. That is, we learned A, B, C, right? So A is generally you go for an unfilled sealant, okay, where the fillers are less, whereas B is a combination of both unfilled and filled. And whereas C is a filled composite resin, means you'll have more filler content in the C. And the next one, these are the few scientist names that you have to make a note. The first one is the prophylactic odontotomy was given by Hyatt. And the restorative material that is used in this is, uh, uh, initially they, they used amalgam and followed by the final restoration is done by oxyphosphate cement oxyphosphate cement or restoration okay so fissure eradication was given by make a note uh, <clears throat> make a note of the scientist bizima was given by okay make a note of the scientist names which are frequently asked questions so coming to the wedging techniques i hope you are very familiar with the three types of wedging techniques so this is a wedging techniques where two wedges are used okay so this is most commonly used in the case of a mesial side of the maxillary first molar because of the presence of flutes in the root near the gingival area. So you can see the two types of edges. They can ask a diagram based question also over this. The second one is double wedging. Here two wedges are used in opposite direction, one from the buccal and one from the lingual. You can see this double wedging technique. And the next one is called as a piggyback. So piggyback, they'll give you the diagram based question as this in this cross section. You have two wedges of two different sizes. One is larger wedge and the second one is the smaller wedge. So when you have to use this is indicated in the case of a shallow proximal box with gingival resin. This is a this is an <coughs> indication case where you got you want to use this particular type of wedge. So coming to xylitol again this is the most commonly asked question. This is a 5 carbon sugar alcohol. So it helps in reducing the lactic acid that is produced by the bacteria. <coughs> There are two things that helps in uh, that, that, that plays an important role. One is it helps in increasing the buffering capacity of the saliva. It helps in minimizing the demineralization, decreasing the demineralization and also helps in increasing the demineralization. So make a note, it also helps in increasing. The, so this, these types of gums which are useful in the case of your white spot lesion helps in the initial treatment of white spot lesion. The next one is <coughs> CPP, ACP. Okay, so most of you are familiar with this CPP, ACP, uh, CPP, ACP plus that is called as tooth mousy or tooth mousy plus. The plus means nothing but additional fluoride. A normal one will have no fluoride. If you, if you use a word plus means the fluoride content is extra. So how much fluoride content is extra? It is very simple. That is 900 ppm of 0.2 percentage of sodium fluoride is an extra. Okay, I hope you are well familiar with CPP, ACP, which we have learned in the smart videos. The next one, types of fissure. These are the different types of fissure. They can ask you which type is more common or more prevalent. So this is the one <laughs> that is the first common. And this is the two that is the second most common. Okay. Next, picked and fissure sealants. This is a, this is an area of questioning. Okay, what are the first generation, second generation, third generation, fourth generation? Fourth generation question is repeated in 2018, 2019. Fourth generation is fluoride releasing. First generation is UV. Second generation is self-cure or chemical cure. Third generation is visible light. 
The next comes indications and contraindications of pituitary fissure sealants, and most of them are very familiar. Just go through this table. The next comes is chemo mechanical preparation. The two important things that most of you are well familiar is keridex and kerisol. And the new thing that is added to the list yesterday, I have posted a, a, a three or four lines of notes <laughs> regarding the papa keri, so which is extracted from papaya. Okay, so the solvent contents to please do make a note and a slight differences. Okay, so slight difference mixing is not required in the case of papa keri. So please. All these three, carries all keridex and papa carry are very, very important. Regularly asked questions are 0 0.5 percentage of NaCl, 1 percentage of NaCl. Okay, they can ask you the ammonia acids that are present in this. They can ask you the pH values. pH values are almost the same. They can ask you the dye. Dye is absent here. Whereas you can see a dye that is present here and here. Okay, which of the following is in liquid state? This is the liquid state. So all these things are very, very important. Please do make a note. Okay, so uh, caries risk assessment tests are very, very important. I, I request personally go back to your PP books. Okay, the entire notes of carry, uh, caries activity test was clearly given. So please do check it. And this is one which is most important. That is the cinder test. <coughs> so please do make a note about the uh, about the changes. And this and the other one is salivary reductase test. Okay, so most of these questions, these two are uh, most commonly repeated by giving the time and by uh, asking you the caries activity the next goes <clears throat> again this question is repeated in uh, 2018 and 2019 what is type which type is used okay so if they ask like art is used in both the types better go with nine as an answer okay so nine <coughs> type nine gic is used in art okay so they can ask you what is pit and fissure type what is what is looting type looting type and restoration type are most commonly asked questions the next comes with a few modifications of the composites and most of you are well familiar with this. If you <coughs> have a confusion over this, please do check these slides which are more than sufficient. This is compomers. How the compomers are different from normal composites. Okay, so these are the most commonly asked questions in your mock examinations. I hope you are done with them. What is geomer? Geomer is a combination of glass ionomer cement with the composite few few words okay so just to make a note what is uh, fluoride recharging capacity okay so what is fluoride recharging capacity how a restoration when it uh, which helps in releasing of the fluorides when it loses the fluorides how we are going to recharge so just go through the literature that is given okay so please do these are organically modified ceramic <coughs> restorations seromers please do silurins Okay, all this comes under your smart materials and most of you are well familiar. What is smart composite? Add a note of this. And what is the advantage of smart composite? So they can ask you these diagram based questions over the recent smart materials. <coughs> this is an Avastic post that is a fiber reinforced composite. Which helps in uh, preparing the partial, I mean like temporary fixed partial dentures. Okay, self-healing composite. What is, what is the catalyst that is used? Uh, what are the uh, what is the element that is present in the micro capsule and these are the questions which are given in 2018 NEET exam most of the questions on smart materials okay so what is the resistance form okay so flat pulpal floor in a sound tooth structure to resist the forces directed in the long axis of the teeth and to provide a strong stable restoration so this is a basically a definition of restorative uh, resistance form okay so please do make a note what what are the things which are required for the resistance form and the retention form so balancing so uh, like if you see the long axis the if you see the long axis the the blade of the instrument should not be more than one to two millimeters it should not be more than one to two two millimeters this is how a balance is provided when the instrument is used amalgam bonding agents uh, i hope you are well familiar tooth and the bonding between the uh, the dental structure and the amalgam is mechanical bonding so to improve the bonding a bonding agent is added which bonds to that of the teeth structure as well as to that of amalgam that is called as amalgam bonding agents and the best example of amalgam bonding agents are these what is sandwich technique you have open sandwich technique closed sandwich technique open sandwich technique in which you'll have a you'll you have your 
GIC facing outside. Okay, so open sandwich is a GIC. You can see GIC is open to outside. Closed sandwich in which the GIC, which is present towards in the inner side, is inside. It's not outside. So your composite will be outside and GIC will be inside. Here, your GIC will be outside. So when we use an op open sandwich technique is whenever you want a fluoride release at that particular area, whenever you want some sort of remineralization at that particular area, go for this sandwich techniques. What is cohesive failure? Cohesive failure means same. Failure or loss of bond between the same is called a cement cement. This is cement, this is cement. This is called as cohesive failure. Adhesive failure is the interface between the thing. This is a different thing and this is a cement. So adhesive phase, adhesive failure is different. Failure between different objects and cohesive failure is failure between the same objects. And most of you are well familiar with eight. Ivory number eight. This is ivory number eight matrix. And this is ivory number one. Very simple, 8, this this looks like 8, 8 is ivory number 1. And the previous one is, it looks like 1, 1 looks like 8 and 8 looks like 1. Okay, again, these are the diagram based questions. These are the particular types of forceps which helps in removing the rotary instruments, GG drills and your silver points from the root canal. You can see these beaks, these beaks are prepared in such a way that you can hold and you can remove it. Okay, mounts classification. Mount is called as father of minimal invasive dentistry or minimal, minimal invasive registration. So in which the class class has two numbers, 1.1 or some 1.1 or 1.2, something like that. One means minimal, moderate, enlarged and extensive. One means, here one means it is a pit and fissure. Sec two means a contact area that is a proximal surface. Three means cervical one third. And this is ICDAS classification. So please do make a note about the terminologies that are useful for the coding. Okay, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So this is a pic which is taken from the student's latest edition. So they can ask you the diagram based question. They can give you this and they can ask you which coding it is. It is 6. So and what is the treatment? The treatment procedure is minimal restorative treatment in all the cases. Because treatment varies from individual to individual basing upon the risk. Low risk moderate risk, high risk and extreme risk. So for four, five and six, okay, the treatments are minimal invasive restoration for all the categories of individuals. And coming to the three, three, it is the sealant or a minimal invasive, same for all. Okay, whereas coming to one, two and three, there is a variation in the treatment plan according to the risk of the patient. So risk assessment is very, very important. The next one is sternal preparation. So they can ask you diagram based questions related to the sternal preparation. So what is the angle of burr that is used in sternal preparation? That is 45. So you're going to keep and you're going to access. Means you're going to, uh, you're going, you're not going to disturb the marginal ridge. This is the marginal ridge. But you're going to access the lesion which is present on the proximal surface by using the burr in 45 degrees angulation. So these are the C factors. Again, uh, these are uh, these are regularly discussed on the group. Okay, don't worry. C factors. Uh, they can ask you the C factor values. Okay. And of course, these are new things and familiar things. They can ask a diagram based question over the dental operating microscope. They can give the schematic representation. So these are eyes. These are lens. Okay. Uh, this is an assembly. That is prism assembly. This is a binocular objective and monocular objective. This is, this is, this is the object. So then they can ask you what is the object lens? What is the reference lens and everything? And uh, one more important thing that you have to make a note. Anyway, we have learned about this during our... Uh, Micro surgery, micro surgery in a, at the endodontics. So, what is the magnification, and what is the associated resolution? So, please do. Uh, I feel like this is very tricky to understand, but nowadays they're they're giving such questions like formulas and everything because we have seen a, a question in twenty twenty neat about the formula park lens formula was given from general surgery. So, this is one of the important formula that when when they're when they're planning to ask a question over the dental operating microscope okay so don't 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 try to understand it as of now just try to remember the formula because any chance it may come in the examination that is the focal length of binocular that is called as flb focal length of object to lens that is f l o l eyepiece power ep and the magnet magnification factor mf okay so the total magnification can be represented by tm that is total magnification is equal to is equal to f l b by f l o l into i power into magnification factor this is a formula that you have to make a note you have to remember this remember this okay 
So in some situation, they can give you a formula by giving all the values, okay, all the values, high power and everything, and asking you to find the total magnification. So this is a mathematical thing. If you remember the formula, you can just include all those values. So please do make a note of this, learn this, mug up this, okay. Maybe, unfortunately, if you get a question, so you're going to get that extra benefit. And coming to, I was always stressing about this carries risk assessment. So what are the things that to be done in the case of an office-based treatments and in the case of a home-based therapist? Like what are the precautions? Everything has to be taken. So in high risk, moderate risk and low risk, please do make a note of this. And now I'll, I'll try to recap some diagrams and I hope we are well familiar with the chair positions. Uh, the universal chair position is 11 o'clock that is called as right rear so what is what are the different things just make a note make a note of it and coming to this this is an air abrasive air abrasive system okay so they can ask you a diagram based question on air abrasive system and uh, this is how the air abrasive system equipment uh, the schematic representation is they can ask you the different terms and terminologies they can ask you the particle size which is previously asked they can ask you the air pressure again this is question is asked they can ask you the angle of attachment okay so there are few other things like duration motion and everything so it's just do make them they can ask you the distance or they can give you the diagram and they can ask you any question over this area so please do make a note of this and the next goes are uh, the instruments which you are well familiar with so please do make a note of these instruments Okay, so the first one, the these are the examples of chisels. One is straight chisel. Okay, the second one is middle stack chisel. Okay, and the third one is pin angle chisel. Okay, so the next comes is uh, the hatchets. Okay, so the first one, this is hatch your GMDs. Uh, the next comes is the burrs and their dimensions. Of course, questions are previously asked on this area in 2017 examination. 169L burr is important, 245 burr is important, and of course, uh, of course, these uh, 271 and 272 are important. So, please do make a note of these burrs, their sizes, and the dimensions. The next comes is, uh, is of course, is of, of course the excavators. Just do make a note this is an angle farmer. So do make a note this is how I think this how uh, is given as a diagram based question in one of the examination recently. C is a dental file. Uh, and do make a note of all these diagram based stuff okay these are different sizes of burrs okay uh, shapes of burrs and for now signing off dr Srikanth from team mds concord